Hi folks. Hi. Welcome to another view of two. Mm -hmm. From two, a lovely uh, sunny spring day in Durban. Yeah, well, this it's is quite lovely. We're actually in Hillcrest today, but oh, yeah. we're outside of a, a clicks. <laughs> <laughs> we are outside uh, of clicks. Uh, uh -huh. So today we, uh, oh, before we carry on, please can you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and comment on the information. Like yeah. To see what you're thinking. Be gentle if you yeah. can. No, don't be gentle. <laughs> be rough if you have to. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so um, today we, we, it's literally the day after an event occurred, which I wasn't even aware of. And Excuse me, I need to cough. Just carry on. Uh, <coughs> a chew. Excuse me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, you... I sent it to you. You, sent, sent, you sent me a message in yesterday. the evening. Yes. My mother had sent me some, well, told me because she came to visit me yesterday afternoon and said, oh, something okay. was going on and clicks. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Did she know what was going on? She just said that there was apparently an ad that had been aired that was offending and there was people protesting. It was, I think it was the e, EFF. Yes. Stuff, right? Yes. So I just said, oh, whatever. And then, and then you I said, said, yeah, I hadn't even seen it. Yeah, and, and you sent the thing to me, and I was like, about. I was like, oh, what's this thing? <laughs> yeah, what's this thing? <laughs> and so this thing has become a big thing. Yeah, and, it's, it's uh, huge. So well, it, yeah, it's, it's huge to those who are paying attention to it, but especially if you try and go to a clicks now. It's, it's huge to clicks. <laughs> it's huge to clicks. Yeah. So I said to you, well, from what I can see, um, from the reaction to what was presented is like way blown out of proportion mm -hmm. as to what mm, what as to, yeah. as to what is actually being said there and you wanted to comment on what was being said mm. and what caused the overreaction yeah well i, I wouldn't say overreaction uh, but what caused uh, the reaction i wouldn't call it an overreaction no, just a reaction I, I would but yeah okay yeah okay, uh -huh. okay so so you've i can see you've got a pad here with a few pages. Writing pad. I'm one. Oh, sorry. Writing pad. Uh, writing <laughs> utensil. <laughs> Not much would fit on that pad. So, so, so we've got a, a writing book here. And uh -huh. uh, you seem to have done quite a bit of... <laughs> it wasn't a bit of research. So, Hiram is Intel. doing a terrible job. What are you doing a terrible You're job? You're doing a terrible job. So, uh, welcome to our impromptu. I'm doing a job introducing... <laughs> You're not introducing it. So, welcome to our impromptu. And we're here to talk about what everybody's talking about today, um, which is the clicks advert and the reaction to it. Uh, can we just change country. it? It yeah. wasn't a clicks advert. No, no. But that's what we'll talk about uh, as, as, as we're going okay. on. Uh -huh. And so... What happened is there was an advert put up on the Clicks um, website on, the, on the, um advertising thing. I'm sorry, I forgot what, was it what on, it's called. Or was it on the was it on the online or was it? Yes, it was online. So it wasn't even posted on the, in the shops. I didn't see it in the shops, but oh. I haven't been to Clicks. But it was definitely okay. online. Well, it, it won't be there now. Trust it, me. Yeah, so it was online, and there was a reaction to it. A reaction that has led to, um, according to Melanie Rice, um, Clicks. Um, delisting and removing all the Tresemme products. Um, all the products? Yep. And removed from the shelves. Um, and With Theresa May's not happy. Seriously. Um, <laughs> and what else, The what has resulted up to date is that Clix has said they will um, concentrate more on local um, products um, and make sure that they expand those products on their shelves. Um, they've also um, accepted a resignation from their senior executive who was responsible and they've suspended all employees involved in publishing the advert. Um, and also they're working together with government to develop um, the beauty market. So this whole thing has led to that so far. Um, there's been looting and perhaps some, a little bit of looting, maybe I should say destruction of some click stores. Um, on Monday when Vikesh who is the um, general um, CEO of Clicks? had said they had um, closed 400 stores. 300 were still op op um, opened. Closed why? Because of... Reactions. Because of the EFF... Um, um, protesting. Protesting, yes. Thank you, because of the of the protesting. I don't know if it was only the EFF, perhaps it was EFF and other people. Oh, this, is, feel... this is all news to my ears. I, I'm like blinded. I don't know yeah. What the heck? Um, also, I was just in the clicks today and it was fine until the oaks pitched up. 
and then they had to close it. Then they had to close it. Yeah. yeah. But I wasn't aware that that was that was happening. We got some Minneapolis going here. Wow. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> so um, and also they tried to before the before the protesting action happened. Clicks tried to go to the courts to stop the EFF from protesting, and that was dismissed. And the EFF has been allowed to to continue. From what I know so far, um, um, the EFF is planning on continuing their protest for the next couple of days. I'm not quite sure. I don't have these facts. Um, and Clicks is trying to clean up. So the first thing, and it's something that you you picked up, was. What exactly is the problem and whose fault is it? Okay. Right. And so Can I give you my perspective? No, are you still are you still No, I've got at least I've I've been factual. I just wanted to make sure that oh, I was no, factual no, 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 no. about what I was going to say about what's happened. Yeah, so from from what from the ad from what I can see. Yes. There were two three quarter shots of black hair and two quarter shots of white, white hair. White hair. Two of them were talking about dry. One was talking about curly dry hair, dry and fizzy. Mm -hmm. Another one was talking about normal. Yes, that was the white. What? Another white. one was talking about fine and, and flat, flat, which was white. And another one was talking about. I can't remember. Let me just look it up. Uh, um, yeah. Damaged. Damaged. Like dry. Yeah. It was dry and damaged, and frizzy and dull. And normal and. Fine, fine and, and flat. flat but we have to be very clear uh, so for the for what represented the black hair so there's no 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 faces were there but you can just see a that nose and half a mouth you can see that it's a black person um for one black person they it says frizzy and, and dull hair next to the hair yeah. um on the other black person it says dry and damaged hair on the one white person's hair it's written normal hair and it's flowing um i just added that but it looks like it's flowing and then on the what? other white persons, it's fine and flat hair. Right, yeah. right so that's what happened. Yes. So what was your understanding so, when you first looked at this? As an advertising guy, I understand well, how I see it is that they were pitching at the black market. Okay. So they were saying, okay, let's, our demographic, we, we're going to try and get black people to buy into this product. Right. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't do a great job of, uh -huh. uh, of communicating that to them because... As far as I understand, and what you've told me, mm. black hair is a very sensitive issue, especially with women. Mm -hmm. The subject of black hair. Yes. Because of the criticism it's received. Yes. And the vitriol. Yes. And so, when you're going to advertise a, a product to a demographic, don't make it appear even remotely like it's a criticism of yes. them. Yes. And so, from an advertising perspective and a creative perspective, failure. Yes. The message was definitely, the, the, it, I can see what they were attempting to do, but it, it fell on <laughs> the wrong ears. Yes. And, and, and people, and so what it tells me is that the creative involved in that doesn't know the demographic very well. Yes. Doesn't know the history of what they're trying to portray. Yes. And doesn't recognize the vitriol that it's going to kick back as a result of it. I can see what they're doing, mm -hmm. but it was executed very poorly. Yes, and yeah. so the the question becomes: If you ha are trying Unilever through Tresemme to um, appeal to the black woman, because obviously these were women that um, were put up here, yeah. why is there white hair advertised as well? Perhaps if you had only had black hair for all of them. But that's what I'm saying. It was a failure on the creative side. Yes. To even co because they're completely different hair types. So either you're, you're advertising for a specific hair type mm -hmm. and these are the four progressively better mm -hmm. or you're advertising across the board. But I can see that from how they presented it, they were obviously trying to go for a certain demographic. Mm. But comparing it to the other demographic was foolish and, and wasn't. And according to me, from a creative perspective, was kind of irresponsible. It, and so there are people who are taking it further. Um, I was speaking to my friend Tobega, um, because here's the interesting thing. Oh, is it, uh, Tobega and Keita. Yes, Tobega oh, and okay. Keita. Um, here's the interesting thing for me, right? And where perhaps I will be um, judged on this. When I first saw this, for me, it was just talking about hair types. Um, that's how it came across. It didn't necessarily come across as racial. 
It was just that some people have fizzy hair, so, some people have... And, but why do you think they were taking it as racial? Do you think maybe it was a misunderstanding of the wording used? I think it's a combination of a couple of things. <clears throat> um, I think it's perhaps the, the consumer not being aware of how hair is described within mm -hmm. the within the, the industry so fine doesn't mean it's great great it means it's very thin yes and it's a bad thing especially for white people because they start going bald yes yeah and normal doesn't mean it's normal good. and yeah normal <laughs> doesn't mean that you're acceptable no. it's just the type of hair yeah. um it's the same way when i was speaking to some friends of mine that if you look at skin type right there's something called dry skin there's something called oily skin there's combination skin and then there's normal skin and so I think Unilever through Tresemme was trying to talk about hair types. Yeah. Um, and so if you take it from that, it doesn't seem initially to be anything wrong. Where they got it horribly wrong, and others accuse it, to, it wasn't just horribly wrong. It's to the point of being racial. Is when you look at the wording, it's fizzy and damaged, there's a black person. Um, it's dull and something, it's a black person. When you use normal, you use white hair. When you use fine, the word fine, whether we understand what fine means or not, but if you're a person who's not in the beauty um, industry or the hair product industry, when you look at the word as fi fine, it's white people. And so it is racially charged. There is an undercurrent for those people who see that. And we like, why couldn't you, if you're trying to appeal to the black market, and I do think Tristan May was trying to do yeah. that, because if we're honest, South Africans, most of us, when we see Tresemme products, my people don't necessarily think it's it's marketed to them. Most of my people walk past Tresemme because Tresemme hasn't, up to this day, appealed to the black market. And I think they were trying to. Mm -hmm. But they made such a bad mistake that some people are questioning how, in South Africa, given that you are in the executive team, how do you make such a mistake? Is it really a mistake or is it possible that there is an undercurrent of racism somewhere to to not have seen that this is not smart? No, I don't think so. No. Why not? How because, do you know? Well, how do you know it is? I'm just saying from, from what I see, if you, two things, was it a South African ad or was it developed in another country and bought you? I don't know. So we don't know that. And you, you can't genuinely tell me that executives who are in a position where they should be connected to the, the people that they're targeting, especially if they're creatives, can't see there's a problem with that. And, the, and that, but that's and, the but, argument. And so I'm saying, is it a deliberate thing or is it something that was too many people making decisions and no one made a decision and then some pleb went and stuck it through and it was aired and it's online so it was probably stuck on I mean it doesn't have to go through a printing process and proofing and all that just gets stuck online that's the other problem mm. just put online someone saw it well once it's online a, it goes viral go it's never going back yeah. so I don't I don't think it was a, a racial thing all right so there's two things you've asked there yeah. as far as it being an international thing if we're really being honest all Okay, I can't make the statement all, but generally speaking, black people, especially from America and South Africa, I can't speak about the rest of the countries, have felt discriminated against as far as their hair type is concerned. In America, they call it nappy, and it's considered not a good thing. Um, if you have an afro, for the longest <coughs> time, it was considered not a good thing. Hair is an issue. I also want to say, let's be honest, white ladies, hair is an issue for you as well. Um, no, that's why I was saying thin hair or, or, or fine hair sucks. Yeah, because it is part of who you are. Mm. And so you've been attacked on your, on who you are. Your hair just grows, but if it's, it doesn't grow in a certain way. And for black people, if it grows a specific way, if it grows nappy, if it grows tangled, if it grows in any particular way, it I was considered... Unless you wanted to grow tangled as a, as a dreadlock. But even dreadlocks, yeah. for, for I remember in, in South Africa, there were issues where you couldn't get um I can't remember, was it in South Africa or was it in America? I can't remember. But because of people had dreadlocks, they're considered dirty. They're considered um because people like assume gangsters or Well, people assume that if you have dreadlocks so you don't wash your hair. And so they don't get the um, 
the right opportunities and jobs because it's like mm, you you don't fit how we want you to look within mm -hmm. our company purely because people don't understand your hair um, and they're choosing to understand it in in the negative and so you're having to straighten your hair in order to be seen as acceptable you're having to put product you're having to put weaves you're having to look in a very specific way for the people who are hiring you who look a certain way um, in order to be acceptable and that seems to be internationally and not just in South Africa and so if this advert was developed internationally rather than locally they really should have been even mm. more aware well I don't know if it's in the Europe issues. there's a lot of less black people in Europe a lot less than white people so those making decisions maybe weren't connected with the issues that black people have with hair. So what I'm trying to say is it might not have been a racist thing it might have just been a, an inconsiderate thing yes and so across whether it was done locally or internationally and so perhaps <clears throat> if if the argument was it wasn't on the forefront racial mm -hmm. can we not say that it is possible just on how the descriptions were at least somewhere in the back of the mind it wasn't purely we don't know because if you purely don't know the issues of the product that you're making and are specializing in your your marketing team sucks. No, well, you haven't done you your You must marketing. remember that a lot of these are, are outsourced to ad agencies. And so it's not in-house. I don't know, maybe Julian even does in-house, but a mm -hmm. lot of them are outsourced. And so they'll have all, and they'll have uh, accounts agents and they'll have all sorts of people making. And that's the problem with these big agencies. You've got so many people to go through. And, and, and also in corporate, decision making isn't necessarily done by the proper decision maker. Someone who's fobs it off and then oh, someone signs off on it. That's why I say, I'm not saying that there wasn't a racial undertone. undertone don't I know. don't know. But I'm saying, I'm looking at all of the things that could go wrong in the situation. Mm -hmm. And giving the benefit of the doubt to them and saying, look, what happened yet? Was it racial? I don't think it was, but I can't say it wasn't. You know, <laughs> completely. And so part of the problem that black people have, because again, this was more of a, um, a discussion that I had with Sobega, mm -hmm. is... It seems that when black people are outraged by what they see, the first question goes, wait, wait, guys, it, can we not give them the benefit of the doubt and say, perhaps there was no intentional racism here. It was just a mistake. And for the people who are truly hurt, some people mm -hmm. are really, really hurt. Um, and Tobago was saying things like, it, it, it brings up a lot of issues for black people. Um, issues that they've had to be fighting for a long time. And so being told you have to pause and maybe think about it and think about it from um, Unilever's point of view, think about it from Click's point of view, think about it from Theresa May's point of view. And the answer is no, um, you're paid to be aware of this. You pay your outsourced marketing team to actually go and do research. Okay, but what responsibility do those who suddenly want to riot now have in behaving with decorum? The rioting, and, and here's the other, no. the other frustration that's here. The rioting has got <clears throat> nothing to do with the fact that clicks, Unilever, and Chesa May hurt people. It's got nothing to do with that. Once we talk about rioting, we take it away from the core issue of those people who are complaining and going, yes, 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 we, we know black people, you've got issues, uh, sorry, whoops, um, but you know the EFF. Um, is rioting and looting and doing well that's a political things. thing though that's got yes, nothing to do becomes... with morals or with, with hurt or pain that's just politics exactly Completely. and so and so <clears throat> what what it becomes is again black issues seem to always be overtaken by political issues and a political agenda that wants well, whose to whose fault is that though it's the I politicians don't know. Whose fault. fault is well, it? it's just, clearly it's the eff's fault <laughs> come on they're the ones out there doing this under the guise of being offended by it being offending black people. Right. Where, are the, where are the normal people who are going out there saying, oh, it's, it's going to hold a rally against um, people who are oppressing us because of our hair? So what normal people, as we <clears> would call them, it's ironic that we're using the word normal. Well, but normal what, as in opposed to crazy. Yeah, I get I'm just saying yeah. ironic. Um, is that people have said they will boycott clicks. Um, people have cut their clicks card and they've said we don't want to be associated with that. But what we do when we start to focus on the rioting 
um, or the dis the destruction of property for clicks, which clicks has the opportunity to go to court and um, fight that battle, is we don't really sit down and go, okay, let me understand your issues. Let me acknowledge that this is really painful. Um, let me try and figure out why is it painful. And let me just sit in that pocket and say, this was painful. Um, whether or not um, <clears throat> I understand why it's painful, I can see it's painful and therefore I can accept that. You know, and so there have been issues of apologies from Clicks itself. And another thing that um, Mr. Vikesh Ramsandi, I don't know if I'm saying your name who's correctly, Vikesh, he's the CEO of, of Clicks, the, oh. the guy who's probably not sleeping very well. I thought was interesting is that when he was asked um, in a newsroom Africa interview, um, which was news feed with Stephen um, Krutus? Krutus? He's one of your people. Krutus? One of my people. What are you talking about? My people. Krutus. Krut there we see. You see, you can pronounce it. Well, one you're doing a good job yourself. <laughs> I'm clearing it right past you. <laughs> one of the things that he said was, and this was an interview done on the 7th of September, he did feel that this was racist. I'm like... Well, then of course he's going to say like, that. Well, no, 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 no. But there's no excuse. No one was putting a gun to his head saying that he should say it. Uh, the metaphoric gun to his head, trust me. Because of the mistakes that he had done. Like, he, he did it. So, I, for Vikesh to have said that, I was like, uh, okay. And <laughs> then, um, and he said that he takes full responsibility. He said that Theresa May itself has issued an apology on the Theresa May website and the Unilever um website and he said the digital team because another th question was asked how is it possible that this in 2020 this is happening mm -hmm. um did they have black people on their team it turns out um for those of you who don't know according to vikesh there are two black members on the um team there are two white people and one um colored person so it is pretty diverse mm -hmm. Um, and so perhaps the question to be asked is, did the black people in this team have a voice? If they had a voice, did they not, did they not understand? Or perhaps did they truly themselves not see that issue either? And then another C thing... Can I just share something before you carry on? Uh -huh. I'm a creative. Yes. You sometimes get so involved in your design that you forget that other people are going to be looking at it. I'll give you an example. I had a client who has a brand called Tight Force. I was commissioned to design the branding for it. And I thought the E in the Tight Force would look nice being centered out and um, use it as part of the, the logogram itself. So I designed this, what I thought was a great looking brand. Stuck, they put the decals on, even he didn't see it. And he's driving in Cape Town and the Oaks are hooting at him. Close open their window and goes, hey, titty. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? He looks at the thing. Oh, heck. It said titty force instead of tight force. And it was spelled T-I-T-E e. instead of T-I-G-H-T. Mm -hmm. And I thought the E was like supposed to be this like um, you know, part of the logogram. So it stood out. But I didn't look at the first two. The first three letters said tit E force. <laughs> and so you're like, how did I not see that? But so, that's the so when you know, if you get you know when you don't go and have the the thing market research, maybe they didn't do any research in the market. Clearly they didn't. Clearly they didn't. So, um, yeah, it just it, it pays homage to the importance of doing market research. Yeah, but you can get so caught up in the design that you don't actually realize that it says something completely different to what you think it says. Clearly, how they did it there, I personally don't understand how it cleared the. And that's what everybody is saying. And, and so just like it's confusing you, it's one of two things. If this is a product going to a new market, surely it's a new market. Surely you must be doing proper research. So mm. you're just tone deaf. And if you're tone deaf, you just don't care. And if you don't care, what does that mean for the market you're trying to go to? And that's why people are trying to say, are there perhaps... These little microaggressions that we talk about as black people in the workplace, these little microaggressions that people don't care about, um, and they're just like, oh, you're going to have to deal with it. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh, you're used to it. So so what you're saying, from what I can hear, mm -hmm. 
correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. is that it's been sort of a rumbling of issues, and then this is highlighted, and it's seen to be done as very insensitively, and so it's exploded in, and it's become very incendiary when it, it, it didn't necessarily have to be. Yes. So people are saying, "I've got you've got issues with my hair." We say, "Oh, whatever," mm. and then it comes out. Oh, check! They're pointing out that the black person's hair is crap and the white person's hair is normal. Even though it doesn't mean that it's good, it just means it's hair. It's seen as a dig at uh, black people. Black, black people's and, hair. And also, it, it's seen as for the words that we understand to be the worst words, so to speak. Black people were put on those words. Yeah. For the words that are a little bit better. So you felt a bit like people, the Danny DeVito of the twins. <laughs> oh, wow. The worst. Do you remember, yes. Do you that talk? Yes. But, like, I don't want to laugh too much because it. No, really, no, no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to make it light. I'm not trying to make light of it. Yeah. Because I, I understand mm-hmm. and I can see why white was reacted to that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but my concern is where it's taken, it's become a political issue now. And, and, and I don't want to acquiesce too quickly into that, but it has become politicized and it's been used as a political device to try and win over more support and say, we care about you. Let us show you how much we care about you. Well, I'm not sure if I, well, You I don't, don't really so. care. All right. But, and that's the other interesting thing though, is Theresa May, Unilever and Clicks opened that opportunity mm-hmm. because Socially speaking, and politics is a social issue, black people have been excluded from certain politics tables. Politics is downstream from the social issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But black people have been excluded because of hair. You know, and so it was easy... So now people wear wigs to try and compensate for that? It, it's, it's, a, it's a really... For some people, it's, it's a really, really big issue. It, it really goes down to self-identity, um, self-hatred, oh, self, that's self-acceptance. The, that's the key word, self-identity. Yeah. And what the globalist, I'm bringing this back into it, was trying to do is to get us to um, polarize our identity. So much so that we're going to fight each other over it. And hair has been one yeah. of those polarizing things. So whether this was a globalist time. thing or whether it was just a coincidence, it's still the same thing. Mm. That it's been used as a means to divvy us up again. Yes. And it's able to be used as that me- as those means because it's a real issue for people. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a hurtful issue for people. And so perhaps for the first time, black people are feeling empowered, whether the EFF means to or not, but they're feeling heard. No, but the, the EFF time. are using that feeling heard to their advantage and yes. saying, we're joining with you and we care about you. We want to support you. I accept that, right? Um, we, I, I'm with you it's in a terms faux, of it's, the... It's faux care. Yes. Complete faux care. I'm with you that the political issue for me is a bandwagon that the EFF has chosen to exploit. I think if the EFF saw itself as a, a, a true opposition, we've been complaining about other issues as South Africans for mm. a long time. Where is our IMF money? Where, um, what is up with what the lockdown? What are you lockdown? doing about the crime? What are you what doing are you about, about gender based violence? What are you doing about all of those things? And so, what Tobega was saying is what's frustrating with the EFF thing is if we start talking about it, we then take it away from again the real. The EFF hurts. have done that though, no? Yeah, but we get the opportunity to ignore the EFF for a, for a minute. How do you do that when they're in your face in the shop? So we, we first go, the EFF is able to do that because people, this is why people are hurt. This is why this is an issue. And if people of other cultures can at least try to first understand that this is hurtful for black people, um, whether you think they should be hurt or don't think they should be hurt is immaterial. The fact is they hurt and they should black people shouldn't have to sit down and constantly try to explain the reasons for their hurt can we just say they were hurt having said that they were hurt how do we then make sure that we never hurt them again and we can say well, you can't, do your no, market you can't, you can't never hurt as, people well but how I mean, do we just, well how do crazy. we try but how do we try you to the safe spots for people i don't understand what, what we want is that the next time unilever does an advert 
they think about it deeply. Well, so that trust me, can, they're going to be thinking about it very deeply. But you're asking me what we want. So what we want is we want the Unilever executive to take responsibility for their, if you want to call it oversight, then maybe their underlying racism, that's fine. We'll take whatever they want to call it. But we want Unilever to, to be made responsible for their oversight, for not having done their jobs properly. Their executives, they sign off on things for reasons. Clearly, we've, just, we've really discussed it. That's what's yeah. going to happen. But I'm saying mm -hmm. that... The, ma the majority of this is being played out on the media as a political issue, which it's now become. And I'm saying it has always been a political issue for black people. Just the political issue has yes. now been stolen and made. But the politi politicizing of it has lost okay. its efficacy because has, it's politicized. Yes. And so it's been stolen and taken away from the real issue. And now it's. it's yes. So we could say, yes, politics. we understand why you feel that way. It shouldn't have happened. And it's regretful. But now it's being politicized mm -hmm. to say we are here to help and, and save you and, and be your um, out there in the in the in the nets batting for you. Mm -hmm. nah, it's not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's been um, co-opted by a political party. And, and it's now a campaign that they can use to rally against the opposition effectively and bring people in emotionally. And I absolutely agree with you. Right. It's the EFF, as all polit political parties will do, has seen an opportunity to become relevant um, and an opportunity to incite people. Perhaps where it's frustrating is for those people who don't usually talk about black issues, if we can call them that, um, and certainly for this hair, is that they seem to very quickly say, OK, we understand and we're sorry and we'll learn. And then they seem to pay more attention and more time to what's happening with the EFF. It comes across as that. Then in saying, let's sit down and really, you know, really try to, to empathize and, and, and sit more in that. But maybe one can argue that the reason why people quickly, it would seem, move on from people's hurt is that the media allows that to happen. The media is concentrating more on the political issue rather than on the actual human issue that that's gone on here yeah no yeah. you know and so um i i want to say honestly for for me this didn't need to happen um it's it's a real a little bit scary for me to say it this way when i first saw the advert um i didn't get triggered by it at all um Hence, because you don't identify primarily as a black person. And also perhaps it's, because... It's about where your identity sits and how you, how you feel about that identity. And also because unlike some people who have had this experience, I've never really had anyone come to me um, and dismiss me because of my hair. This is not to say other people haven't had that experience. And so it was speaking to Tobega, it was speaking to Brenda, where I was like, okay, I can see how this is an issue. And it was an opportunity for me, because these are people I care about, to sit down and educate myself um, rather than to look to be educated. And so I can understand why it's become such an issue. Um, I can also understand why people are upset with clicks. What I don't understand is that there doesn't seem to be as much of a reaction to Unilever itself, who are actually the owners of this product. There doesn't seem to be as much of a reaction to Tresemme, who are the people who actually produced the the advert. Mm. It, it seems, and I'm, I'm not a spokes I'm not mm. a spokesperson for Clicks at all. Um, but Clicks, if you want to give me some shares, I will still take. Oh, um, I, I have no affiliation with clicks whatsoever. It does seem unduly um, biased. biased more mm. towards clicks mistake than Unilever and Tresemme, even though both companies have um, apologized. And not to say that people should not want to be angry with clicks if they if they want to be I'm, I'm not here to direct where your anger should go should you want to have anger um and should you feel anger sorry not to say want to have anger but i i do i do wonder why unilever and Tresemme have been let off the hook i do oh wonder. it's still early days man 
Marion died too. It started last week. Last week, Thursday. <laughs> I don't pay attention to the news. So. Yeah, it, it, it started at the end of last week. It is still early days. Um, so I, I do feel a little bit for, for clicks. I'm like, yes, you guys messed up. Um, and, and Vikesh, shame, you've, you've apologized many a times. And part of the problem with um, the apology, one of the first apologies that Vikesh had was, you know, we apologize. We see that this was insensitive. We've given... Um, some money to um poor black people and everybody what? was exactly and everybody was like really well you've really? done more than uh, our government's <laughs> given <laughs> right. during but, the lockdown but That's wait but wait but wait a minute are you saying that dull frizzy hair and and, Af and afros it's, it's are poor, poor poor black people you know so <laughs> clicks, you, kept, oh, you kept on messing up clicks you know um mm, and as one of my friends was saying perhaps you should look into your mm. pr um your yeah, PR yeah, yeah. people and be like maybe they should they should be changed or maybe they should just go for some education themselves and so and another thing clicks that you did was you were so immediate in apologizing rather than to go and sit with um, Unilever and Theresa May and let them perhaps apologize first um, which led to people then attacking you mm. even more you know this was just a, a mess upon a mess upon a mess um, I do see clicks with perhaps having fired people trying okay. to make amends, but I don't think you had a choice, clicks. But don't. Yeah. We're from here. Because, okay, there's only so much apologizing one can do, so much educating one can get, so many days of protesting outside. What do you say is the solution? Because from what, you're, from what I'm understanding you're saying is it should be the issue of the hair and the people who are offended by it, not the rioting and the, the political party who's using it as a um, as a tool and a means a to, tool, yeah. to get more people to buy into their political ideology. So what is it that the people who are offended that you've spoken to want? They want to feel heard. And, and how, how, much, how much apologizing does that take? Who... who who, how do they want to feel heard? I'm confused. I think they they want, like they've said, one of the things they wanted is they wanted heads to roll. Heads um, to roll. So to speak. They wanted executives, people who are put in positions and are paid money to actually be aware of this. They wanted them to be held accountable. So that's happened um, as far as clicks is concerned. I what does a head roll mean? They wanted them to be held accountable. But what does that mean? Um, first of all, you need to either suspend them um, or perhaps clearly they're not good at their jobs, fire them if that's what you decide. But they need, you need to see that action has been taken against those people for at the very least their gross misunderstanding of their job description because this is just terrible. Um, if so the company needs to, and it's for those companies to try and find ways to make amends. Because again, what Tobago was saying is there always seems to be this thing that we, the victim is always the one who's then told to come up but not, with. A, but I'm I'm confused. How how is it a victim? I'm still. And that's it. I'm still like very confused as to how the pictures on a advert make that person a victim. The pictures on the advert remind one in their minds that they're still not good enough. Okay, they so the person themselves doesn't feel good enough. So they're because, taking because they're taking a message that wasn't intended to be. Whether it was hold on, hold on. Not. Let me just finish. It wasn't intended to be, as far as I can see. Why would anyone put on an intentionally offensive ad? Okay, why would they? Not very clever. But why would someone suddenly now go, "Ooh, that's me." I have bad hair because of what the ad's telling me. I, I'm, I'm because for the longest time, people were made to feel like because your hair is not good enough, you can't enter here. You can't enter here because you have a... I'm going to go for, further there. Because you have a flat nose. Yeah, but that's not relevant because, anymore, no? And yet people... And that's what people are saying is that you don't understand. For them, it is still relevant. For them, it's so still So they're still hurtful. living with hurt from decades ago. It's... It's in their soul now. Yes. They're owning the hurt. Who are they blaming for that hurt? They're blaming, first of all, the system that created that, the system that said, 
because you don't have the right hair, you can't enter into these circles. Um, so they blame. But that's no system. longer relevant, though. So but, yes, we understand that it may have been that way at one stage. So how does one now get over that personal view of themselves? How one gets over that personal view of themselves is perhaps between them and their science psychologist. But what does help is how one can avoid triggering somebody in that. You can't avoid triggering people, you, no? You cannot never, tell me. Unilever could have avoided this particular trigger. Like you said, it was Yes, but the point is, why get triggered over it and see it as a personal thing? Because you're trying to get me. That's what marketing is about. You're trying to get my me as an, an individual to yes. buy into this product. It's a very personal thing. Yes. You want me. So we want you to use our product me. to help with your hair. Yeah, it's yes. a personal thing. Yes. So of course I'm going to get a personal reaction to it. There wasn't a picture of your friend there saying your hair is terrible. Come on. All right. So you're in marketing, right? You do know they hire psychologists to get into the mind of someone because it is a very personal thing. You're trying to get to the hearts and the minds of people in order to convince them mm -hmm. that you should buy my product you know we maybe i'll take cars i don't know maybe mm. little about cars but when you're driving a certain car you feel a certain way as an individual it is a very emotional re reaction mm -hmm. so of course i'm going to have an emotional reaction but i'm not, not going to take that, it personally it, i'm going to take it personally if i don't have that car no no but people take driving a certain car very personally when yes if you but drive in the a ad mercedes, i'm not going to see an ad of a mercedes and go oh jesus i'm offended by by the by it, the mercedes it oh, depends, it's horrendous it depends on the type of advert that you put up in the same way that you can take it personally and be like oh i feel good about this right there are adverts that make you feel good yes but so but there but are now, feelings about it but having a a visceral reaction to something means you've got a personal concern about it that's deep centered and may have not been intended by the ad but you're now taking it upon yourself to feel that way whether it's intended or not all marketing as far as i understand is supposed to get to you emotionally it is supposed to put at you in your emotional strings and therefore it is supposed to emote what i am feeling as a person that is what marketing is for that's what marketing executives yes. do so it is a very personal thing it is very personal. I am going to, any advert that I see, but, like I go, oh, you know, I really feel no. like a, this is good. <sighs> okay. Of course, it's going to be personal. Of course, it's going to be a personal reaction. Of course, it's going. So you, if I'm understanding your question correctly, it wasn't my picture there. Right? It wasn't so anyone's why, picture. It was a side view of a particular of kind of hair, of hair that is dry, that is fizzy that people would want to have cured. First of all, that's depicted as dry and fizzy. We don't know that it was dry and fizzy. Well, they said it was in the and thing. And that's the problem, is that when they depict that type of hair, and they say that hair is damaged, and they say that hair is not good, you're talking about my hair. Because you're trying to talk to And the to white me. ones was about thin and they fine. They didn't use and the, word, the word thin, right? They used the word normal. No, no, use the word fine and... Fine word? and flat Fine was and for flat. one, and okay. the other one was normal. Which is what white people don't want, and it's concerning to them to have fine and flat hair. And yet the so, wording, yeah. especially if you're saying Chesame is trying so to get So would you want them people. to say damaged and flat? Something. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. But if you're going to use aggressive words for the other ones... But they weren't aggressive. They were, I, don't, I don't know. Damaged. Just, the word damaged seems bad to a person who is not in the hair industry the word damaged oh, wow. if you say somebody's damaged that's how they perceive it's not it the person is damaged the hair is damaged yes but that's a thing that's that's what this product is going to rectify right and that's the problem that we're saying was, was well really then all it is then problem. what it is is it's a misunderstanding a and bad one uh, i agree it's a misunderstanding yeah, but it's it's been blown so colossally out of proportion because of emotions based on erroneous information on both sides, misunderstanding what was being said and misunderstanding the market, it was a mistake. Okay. And that's where black people get angry, is that you tell yeah, but them... But you get, you get angry over a lot of things, right? And that's their right. <laughs> it's that when people tell you how much anger you should have, when you start using words like it was out of proportion, for that person, it isn't out of proportion. And so, again... Yeah, well, when then stop black, buying from clicks. When, but, but, when black people are told, really, guys, it was a mistake. Like, let's get over it. 
there are those are part of the microaggressions who are you to tell somebody who's been hurt how much hurt they can feel i'm not saying you as her i'm just saying oh, generally man. that is that really is the big issue here is how who are we if somebody says this hurt me to the point of i want to wail and cry and be upset we don't get to say guys you don't have to be this upset about it what people are wanting is that people Why are wanting not? Why can you not say you don't have to be this upset about it? Because what I want oh, is, is it because, for, huh? You want this? What I want is for you to say, okay, I accept that this is really hurtful. And they've hurtful done that. No, no, no. We accept that it's hurtful. Yes. They but, haven't done it to the point to your person, satisfaction. Those people's satisfaction. Oh yes. Okay. Because well, you are asking. Then you can never. It's a rabbit hole. You're going to go down forever. No? Not necessarily. Oh yes. Not necessarily. Well, you know what? Unilever and <laughs> Tresemme May oh. and Clicks. I would like to see you try and to see if you can make amends or you can just say you know what guys we're never going to fix this so we don't we're not going to do anything i don't know how you want to do that's this. a rabbit hole that is just going to go on into perpetuity or maybe unilever and tresemme and clicks will find that actually maybe speaking to the executives and firing them maybe working with government um to to ensure that people are educated about hair products. Maybe actually Working with government to see that people are educated about hair Vikesh products. Vikesh said... What on earth is going on? What they've said is... What has government with, got to do with it? Clicks will work with government to develop oh, the local oh. beauty market. So what government and clicks are going to do is God. they're going to identify whoever they want to identify and help. You know, maybe that's what it's going to take. What has government got to do with it? How about I'm telling you, Jay? It's got nothing to do with it. Clix has still... chosen to work with government. That's so it's got and, something but, to do with it. Oh, oh my god. What what do you mean what does government have to do with it? How's this a government issue? No, it's a Clix issue. But how's it becoming a government issue? It isn't now? a government issue. Clix is working with government. But why? Because they'd like to. Oh my word. Okay. Well, I don't understand the logic. Anyway. So Ma, so what you get is sometimes you get, get you can get funding from government right. in order to do business. Um we they call them tenders. Um, and so Clix is perhaps, I don't know how Clix is going to do this, but Hiram is asking how. So this is perhaps a possibility that Clix is going to work with government to give funding to develop the n national beauty product industry. So they're going to socialize national beauty. How is that socializing? Government's getting involved. Anything to do with government socializing it, Don? So tenders are socializing? 100%. Okay. From government, definitely. All right, then that... You can't means, tell me that there's no socializing involved. Does that mean that... What is what socialism in terms of making sure that they own the companies? What do you mean by socialism? Centralizing control, oversight from government. Um, That's socialism. Okay. Fascism. All right, 100%. so tender, tendering, lobbying... From government is, is socialized, definitely. Yeah, so Clix has decided to socialize. Oh, power to you. Holy okay. cow. Yeah, so... If you're wondering, um, clicks, Tresemme, Unilever, what to do, perhaps rather than saying we've apologized, you can say clearly people are still unhappy. Um, clearly they feel unheard. And maybe from now on, you can do your proper marketing research and actually go to the people that you're marketing to and have conversations with them and have uh, conversations with them such that they feel understood because you've taken the time to understand them and let this be a warning for everybody else this perhaps came up and blew up in in clicks face but for oh, anybody I, else I'm who's trying to about get the to warning let me finish for oh, anybody really? else who's trying to go to a new demographic make sure that you actually do your job properly because if you don't do your job properly, if you don't do your research Mom, properly, it's going to blow up in your do face. Do me a favor. How many times has this happened? What? This kind of event. I have Maybe no idea. once or twice. I have no idea. Well, that you've seen. If That's you're grown up. If you're speaking, it was an H&M, one that I saw once, about two or three years ago. And there's this one. If you're speaking about when marketing executives have... Um, made gross mistakes in terms of who they're marketing to and haven't done their research and haven't thought properly um and had a blown up a blowout or a blow up in response to that 
I can only think of two. Has marketing people done really bad jobs before? I'm sure they have. Yeah. Um, so for me, this is an anomalous thing, mm -hmm. which came from some bad decision making. Terrible. The decisions have led to the point where you're burning down stores. Well, it was yeah. a terrible, terrible decision. Yeah. Sorry, we just uh, had a bit of a mishap. Sorry, we had a bit of a mishap. Uh, <laughs> no, no, in, we went, yeah. Okay, carry on. Yeah, but you're the one who's seeming to want to say that this is crazy. What, burning down stores? No, yes. burning down stores is crazy. We can both agree on yeah. that. Okay. Um, I'm just saying that when I say this is a warning to other people, I don't mean a warning in, term, in terms of be scared, your, your stores are going to be burned down. But it is, or maybe... A, it's a lesson. Use it as a cautionary tale, right? That especially if you're going to a demographic that you don't understand, no, make no, sure that you're working. As I said to you, it's so few and far between that 99.999% of the time, there is necessary vetting going on and, and you know, proofreading, making sure that there's... Everyone involved in in, uh, in the process is okay. This is something we can put out to represent the, uh, the company. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, it's done. This leaked, this somehow leaked through the cracks and has caused a nationwide fallout. Why does that stop me from saying this is a cautionary tale, though? Because it's it's so few and far between. They clearly are never going to do this again. Oh, and stupid. people who have seen the who have seen the fallout. I mean, it's. Uh, I just, I don't know. It's, it just seems so bizarre that this is, we're living in a, in a, almost like a simulation at the moment. It just feels crazy for me. And Genuinely. I understand that. And I think of people who have educated me about this and about this issue well, for those them, who yeah, are on, hurt, on their point of view, on their yes. point of view, because that's what I wanted to do. Um, I'm, I'm very big on, I understand that just because something doesn't affect me, um, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt the person who it affects. Um, and it is the people that it has affected um, that yes, have spoken out. Yes, and I'm saying, out. why has it affected people? Hell, Hiram, but I keep on... I keep and on. that's why, well, that's what I brought it up. I said, why? Because for them, it brings up issues that hurt them personally. Um, and brings up old wounds that they've personally gone through and feel like, once again, we're having to fight these little microaggressions from companies that are so big that this mistake did not need to happen at all however if you want to call it a mistake that's fine it is a very bad mistake it's a very big mistake and you have to pay for that mistake are they wrong to ask for the mistake to be rectified how do they want it rectified they want those and how, people and and what what is the so-called justice that they require is it really to to meet is it, is it to fit the size of the wound the plaster or do they want that plaster to be way over what is required and that's why i say it's who's a say it's it? a perpetual hole that can go on forever unless it stops who's to, it. to say it's way more than what is required who's to determine and that? who's to say it's not the person who's hurt oh, right well, if you're trying to I'm make sorry, restitu but I can't agree with that. if you're trying to make restitution who shouldn't you speak to the person that you've harmed and ask how can i make it better and, and that's why I say that can be a perpetual hole that can go on forever. That's fine, but it keeps Look at asked. what's happened with the, I don't know, I'm taking this totally off, off scope here, but the Germans are still paying Israel to this day, 75 years later, a billion dollars a year. And Germany is still doing this. Well, they clearly that's social think justice a, coming out. Whatever, but Germany is still doing it. As I'm saying, it's a perpetual hole that can go on forever. So clicks, Unilever, Tresemme, it is possible that you've opened a, her a hole that you're going to have to pay for forever i don't know but it's a possibility crazy i don't know if it's crazy i don't know if i agree with hiram um what was said by people is they wanted to know first of all who were the decision makers in this they wanted those names and like i said they wanted heads and to why do they want those names because they want to know the face of the people who, who made these huge horrendous mistakes so, so that so that they can ask them personally why did you do this so that they can get an understanding. Well, let's just agree to disagree. You're disagreeing? What? You don't think when people are hurt, they have a right to ask for the person to make it right? And I'm saying, how far do you have to go 
to make it right. And you're saying, speak to the individual. And I'm saying that individual could be irrational and wanted to go far beyond what's required. You're not thinking that's possible. And I'm saying the, the problem that comes with that language is to say, who is to say far beyond what's required? Who has that And measure? who's to say that, they can, that, it, that it will not go far beyond what's required? And therefore what we need then is for people to have that conversation. They need, there needs to be that conversation between the people who were, who were hurt and the people who hurt them. And then they can decide together how so, far it should go. However million people who were offended will sit down with, how do you plan on that? How's it going to work? It's, it's, well, uh, it's an impossibility. All, no? So what has happened so far <laughs> is those however million people have at least started by saying how they want those amends. They have said, we'd like to know who made this decision. They have said that. So that would be the beginning clicks. That would be the beginning Unilever. That would be the beginning Tresemme is to say, well, perhaps maybe we can't give you the individual's names, but we can say as an executive team, it was us who made these mistakes. Then people want to know, how could you make such a huge mistake? Then as Vakesh, you know, good on you, Vakesh. You have said you don't have the tight measures in place. You were used to the brick and mortar kind of um, marketing. You don't have the, the checks and balances that you need to have in clicks. That was another thing that he was, he seems to be listening to the people. And he said, we know that this happened because we didn't do our proper or our due diligence. So people can say, well, given that you are aware that you didn't do your due diligence, you are fired as happens in any company if you don't do your due diligence. And now that people are being fired, perhaps it's coming to an end. I don't hear you, Unilever, and I don't hear you, Theresa May. And the reason why I keep on talking about Unilever and Theresa May is because, as I've said before, I do think that Clix is carrying more of the burden than I think is fair. All right, folks. Well, <laughs> good luck. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, there is a political discussion to be had about this and uh, you know given how the world works we will have more political discussions to be had but I, I, w I was more interested in the social issue this time but I agree with you I think politics is trying to take this over and I was no trying it to has say, taken it over okay. they're not trying to it has taken it over and I was trying to say like uh, this is not a fair thing, but just like Black Lives Matter was saying in, the, in in America, that looting has taken over this issue, and we're no longer talking about well, the Black issue. Well, Black Lives Matter are now the issue. Well, but we're not going there. Mm. For this, I was trying to make sure that View of Two spoke about the yeah. social part and to say, um, we hear you, we don't necessarily agree, right? But we do hear, and like I said, for me, I am a black woman, I have natural hair. When I first looked at this advert, I personally did not feel attacked. But like Hiram pointed out, this is because of perhaps how I identify in, in my hierarchy. Having said that this didn't affect also, me... Also because you've, you've never been judged by your hair. By my hair. On a... Um, it's never closed shut corporate doors Corporate level. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. And, and what I'm saying is I, I can see how it could be taken offensively. I'm not denying that because you'd be crazy not to see it. Especially in the environment that we're in at the moment. And I'm saying there is, there's got to be a way for us to get beyond that. And I you're agree. saying that it has to be a sit down and let's discuss it thing. And, and then maybe people can feel vilified in their, um, that's, that's for damage control. Yeah. What I'm saying is before it ever gets there in the future. And that's why I said it was a cross, a cautionary tale. Do your due diligence. Like even you, if I can say this, even you, a white guy can see guys come on right come on it shouldn't have had to be taken this far and so this what people are then feeling gross negligence on your part as national and international and companies you should have been aware of but this. also what we need to also remember is that not every black person is offended by it as i've said yeah so there are a number of people who just really couldn't care but there are some who have taken it personally and for whatever reason they've taken it personally I'm not here to say whether it's right or wrong. That's purely up to them. Um, but for me, the disgrace has come where a political party has now politicized it and used it as a, as a weapon. And I think the political party was able to use it as a weapon and hijack um, this because it runs so deep mm. for enough people 
that clicks had to pay attention. Um, if it had just been a pocket size of people, um, the EFF wouldn't have bothered. No politician would have bothered. But it is very, the No, but you can't people, tell me that their involvement hasn't hyped it up, Mom. No, it, it certainly has. But it certainly hasn't hyped it up for me. No, right? but it's, still, it's, they've definitely got the hype going and they've got, they've, somehow they've got people involved. I don't know how the people are pitching up at all these places, who's funding that, how it's, how it's being controlled. They've certainly yeah. hyped it up, right? But they've hyped it up because they knew there was the availability. They knew there would be enough hurt people and hurt so deeply that they could hype it up. I'm not, I'm not well, saying that they Well, it's another one that's the chicken or the egg scenario. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so um, perhaps in conclusion, from my side, or do you want to conclude first? No, go for it. Um, I honestly don't think, in, if I, in my heart of hearts, I don't think that this strategy was intentionally racist. Um, I don't know if there were undercurrents um, of racism in it. It is possible. Having said that, um, I'm also aware that hair is a very big issue for black people. Um, it has been for a very long time. And so when you first see this, I can understand how it is possible for you to have a knee-jerk reaction to it and how it can be hurtful. Um, I do think it is possible for there to be a middle ground. Um, I do think there is, for those who are hurt, I hope you, you have the platform to express your anger um, in a way that is promoting of good health than it is to perhaps take away the livelihoods of, of other people. Um, and I would hope that you are mindful of that. Um, I hope that you feel heard. I hope that you feel understood. Um, for the market, the stores and the companies that have made this big mistake, guys, this was really, this I, I agree with people was, was really just plain negligence negligence i would use the word stupid um and unnecessarily so i hope that you have learned your lesson and i hope that you dig down deep and really really try to understand your demographic um and really cater to them um wow. in the best way no i really do i really hope that if you're going to market to a people take the time to understand them take the time to know that this is this is dumb. Take that time. That's what you pay researchers for. That's why you fork out the, the amount of money that you fork out. So I hope you do your due diligence because there was no need for this blow up. There was no need for there to, to be the potential of a political party um, hijacking. hijacking this. There really was no need. For those people who are hijacking this movement, shame, shame on, on you. you. Shame on Seriously. you. Seriously. Um, for the news broadcast that is using this for their own ratings and money they, and pretending that this is about people, shame on you as well. That would be my... Cool. My, and then you. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Okay. Thanks, Bye. folks. Bye now.